Hi, welcome to Daddy Curb's Farm. The other night I shot a video in the garden that was all about planting the trees that I got from Arbor Day Foundation. The whole time I was recording, there was no audio. So that one won't get recorded. But I did buy some trees, or actually you give a little donation to the Arbor Day Foundation and they send you some trees and I'm getting them potted up and I'll either plant those on the farm at some point or give them to friends and family. But this time, this video, it's just going to be a little walk around the farm. So let's take a walk. <coughs> right outside the garden is this round garden. Last season I had the sweet potatoes in here. A viewer friend sent me some sunchokes and I thought this would be the perfect place to keep them contained. One of the things I haven't talked a lot about yet on my channel is the swales. That's the water harvesting method of digging these trenches on contour and berming up the backside and planting on the berms. This swale right here is the top swale. I have three main swales on my farm. I'm going to take you a little walk and show you all three. This is the one that I call the top swale. <laughs> geese are making a racket. This is one I call the top swale. It collects the water first and then spills over and heads down to the next. So this swale is just bare dirt right now because it's where it's been dug out and the water comes in and the the ducks and the geese and the chickens they like to get in there and they scratch it all up and lots of nutrients and lots of water get caught right here and it feeds this property. The water then fills up on a heavy rainfall and spills over right here and heads down toward the next swale. Directly on the back side of the swale, one of the things that I want to point out is this green area. This nice lush green area right behind the swale, not too long ago, was completely eroded and degraded. The water would come through here, which is why that's a nice place for a swale. But once I interrupted that water and I threw some compost out here, this native green came back and filled it in very nicely. In the middle of the property right here at the end of the chicken and goat run is this minor little water catch here. It's not really a swale, but it, it catches water and feeds, there's a tiny little berm and there's some comfrey and a banana tree there. All of these buckets here were rainwater that we had caught and we decided to bring them over here so we could easily just water the banana tree and the trees that are on the berm just behind. Just beyond the little water catch there is this larger swale. This is really my swale number two. And this is just a catch in the middle of the property to help store the water and soak it in. I don't have any special plantings on this berm. There is one tree that I hope to feed and it will grow up and be a, it's a golden rain tree. That'll be wonderful for the bees when it's full size and flowers out. But so far this middle swale is my least efficient swale. The catchment for this one is a little bit off. And I need to do some work up above to help direct the water into this swale a little better. From the middle swale, the water fills up and spills over. And I'll show you how it kind of winds through and ends up in the lower swale that's in the orchard. When the water fills up in the middle swale, it spills over right here and starts working its way through the property in kind of a winding form. You can see the lower parts in the rain, in a big rain event, it becomes like a small creek or a river. So you can follow this around all the way to the orchard. There's a few low spots where the water puddles up, becomes small ponds, small catchments. And that is essential for catching silt so it's not all just running down and catching in the big swale. The lower swale that is uh, behind the mulch garden and the orchard is kind of a two-part swale. It comes in here and fills up and then it spills over just a little bit down into the big swale behind the orchard. So this is the big swale. This is the swale that's down by the orchard, the lower swale, whatever name we want to give it. 
but it's the one that I've put the most effort in designing and actually carving out. My little tractor has had quite the workout on this swale. This is the only swale that I filled up with mulch. I did that to help retain the moisture and to create a composting effect that would soak that compost tea or the, the liquids and nutrients from the breaking down of the mulch into the orchard. It's been very interesting watching the, the life start to happen in the swale, in the orchard too, but right here in the swale where all this mulch is, it's been a couple weeks since we've had any real rain. I'm gonna move some of this mulch and I want you to see how much moisture is down here and how dark and rich that is. That right there is just so full of water. I mean, I could wring water out of that. And that clay, the bottom of this swale that was just hard pan, dark clay, is becoming very soft and very rich. The other morning when I left for work, pulling out the driveway, I looked down the swale and there were just hundreds of mushrooms popping up in this mulch. Now that was pretty cool to see. Now let's head down to the area that I call the mulch garden and I'll show you the decomposition that's happening there as well. This mulch here in the mulch garden has been down for five, six, maybe more months. And it's been interesting to come up here and just observe how it's breaking down and adding nutrients to this soil as well. You may notice that I have some grass growing and I have to figure out how to fix that. But let's go ahead and dig into this mulch and I'll show you what's going on under here as well. This mulch is a lot deeper than the mulch that's in the, the, uh, the swale, the orchard swale. This goes down probably 10 to 8, uh, 8 to 10 inches, maybe more. But all the way down there, you can even feel the, the heat that's going on down there. So I got some, some serious composting going on and it is just turning dark and rich. And this walk puts us in the orchard, which is really my favorite place on the entire farm. I have thoroughly enjoyed over the last five years planting and nurturing and learning from the trees and the swales, the compost, the mulch. It has taught me a lot and I really appreciate you being on this journey with me. And our final stop of this little walk is at the nectarine tree where I put the, the peach graft on it. This is one of those experiments that has meant so much to me. It's just fun taking that next step and learning something more in the garden. This one looks like it's going to be okay. And I'm going to be excited to pull peaches off of my nectarine tree. Thank you so much for taking that little walk with me. If you have any questions about the swales and the berms and how the water is flowing on the property, Go ahead and ask in the comments below. I'd love to see if I can answer those for you. If you would subscribe and like and share this video, that would mean a lot to me too. Thank you again, and I'll talk to you soon. I needed to catch my breath and wait for that jet. <laughs>